Hello, in this episode I'll be doing something slightly different and showing you how to add two forms of time travel into your maps. These are concepts which are hardly used, so they present many unseen opportunities for maps and mods. Whilst using test chambers may be limited, it's still a great feature you can use in more adventure focused maps. There will be timestamps on screen if you want to skip to a specific section. The first method I'll be showing is time travel through the use of a time gate or time portal. I spent a short time making this room here to show off this feature. We have the time gate in the middle where I've used the portal door bits frame model. You can use whatever model you want, but this one works well, especially due to its clean curved look, giving it a more futuristic feel. If you're using this, do make sure to copy and paste the brush exterior from another map. There'll be some VMFs or valve maps already in the SDK content folder, which you can just open up and take the brushes from. For the area you want to time travel in, you need to create a copy of it, then give it whatever time-related aesthetic makeover you need, past or future. In my case, I'll make an area in the future. I won't go into detail about aesthetical choices for this area, but I do use many of the methods that I show off in my overgrown aesthetics tutorial. Huge difference for the original, it's either all collapsed or covered in plants. It conveys the time that's passed very well. Once the locations are all ready, in the present area we can create a new entity and make it a linked portal door. Place it in the middle of the door frame, 64 units above the ground, face it perpendicular to the door frame, you can see where it's faced based on the yellow line in the 2D viewports, or the red line in the 3D viewport. My door is 128 units wide and 128 units high, so we set the width and height both to 64 as it uses radius which is half the diameter, or more simply the distance from the centre to the edge. Next, set start active to yes. You're also able to send the linked portal door open and close outputs if you want to turn it off and on instead. Give it a unique name, I'm calling mine portal A1, then shift drag to copy it over to the alternate room where you can place it in the exact same place but rotate it 180 degrees so it faces the other direction. Rename it to portal A2, then in either A1 or 2 set the linked partner to the other one. Next, move both entities one unit forward in the direction that they are facing, so towards the yellow line. This is to avoid clipping problems between the second pair of portals we're about to add. So shift drag to copy the linked portal door and make it two units behind the original, behind being the opposite direction to the yellow line. Then rotate it 180 degrees. Give it a new name, I'm calling mine portal B1, then set the partner to portal B2, then I'll do the same on the other side, but this time name it Portal B2. Loading it up, it should all work now. Something else you can add for extra detail is a fizzler. This doesn't have to be a functional fizzler, it can just be decorational, but I will show how to make a functional one. On top of the door, create a new brush that covers the entire door. Make it 8 units thick. Apply the fizzler texture to both sides of the brush. Make sure you click fit so it's correctly sized and aligned. Hit Ctrl T to turn it into a funk detail, then turn it into a trigger portal cleanser. Set visible to yes, and to make it fizzle objects, tick physics objects in flags. Copy it over to the other side, then in game it should look like this. This does sell the portal feel a lot stronger than the original, although both can work. Also, if you want a subtler effect on the door, you could instead use the texture for the underground fizzler, which looks like this in-game. And for final touches, you can place your soundscapes inside the middle of the time gate like this, so that whenever you step through, it will transition to the soundscape of the next location. Here's what that sounds like in-game. Next I'm going to show you how to make another time travel method where instead you see a flash and you're transported to the same spot you were before but in the future. First we need to create a new trigger brush that covers the entire area where you can be transported from. Make it a trigger teleport, give it a unique name, I'm calling mine teleport trick. Next you want to create a new entity in the alternate area, place it somewhere memorable such as the middle, I'm going to place mine inside the time gate, then make it an info teleport destination, then in the original area place another new entity in the exact same spot for this area. Make it an info teleport landmark, give both entities unique names, I'm calling mine teleport landmark and teleport dest. In the trigger teleport, set teleport destination to the entity in the alternate area, and local destination landmark to the entity in the main area. Make sure start disabled is set to yes. Next, create a logic relay. Add the output on trigger, name of your teleport brush, enable, and if you're able to return to this area, make sure you create another output that disables the brush 0.01 seconds later. Give the logic relay a unique name, then set up some way of triggering it. This can be through a trigger brush, dialog, or in my case, this button. If you load it up, now it will work. But the change is very abrupt, and if you have new models on the floor, this 
can cause issues with the player getting stuck. You can solve this in a few ways. You could disable collision of the models that get in the way, simply just not place any models that get in the way. Or as I'm doing here, you can raise the teleport destination slightly. I now no longer get stuck, however the transition now involves a slight fall, but this isn't going to be a problem as we're going to add a flash next. Create a new entity and make it an end fade. Set the colour to something very bright like white. Set the duration of the fade to 0.5 and the hold time to 1. You can tweak these if you want, but these are the values that I'm going to use. Give us a unique name, I'm calling mine fade in. Shift drag to duplicate it, rename the new entity, I'm calling mine fade out. Keep the same duration, but set the hold time to 0. In flags, tick fade from. In the fade in, add the output on begin fade, name of your fade out entity, fade with a delay of the entire length of the fade, which is duration plus hold time, which in my case is 1.5. Then in the logic relay, add a new output to the fade in to make it fade on trigger. Then change the delay on the outputs to the trigger brush to a time after the fade has been completed, which in my case is 0.5 seconds. So I can just put a delay of one second. And also change the disable output to 1.01 seconds. In game, it will now look like this. We can prove this further by adding sound effects, create a new entity and make it an ambient generic. Give it a unique name, I'm calling mine Teleport SFX1. For the sound, I'm using a lightning sound imported from Counter-Strike, although you can use any sound you feel works. Shift drag to duplicate the SFX. In the new one, I'm using this ambient random abstract sound, which is a strange ominous alien-like sound. And rename the SFX to Teleport SFX2. In the fade out entity, add a new output, on begin fade, Teleport SFX2, play sound. And in the logic relay, I create a new output to the teleport SFX1 to play that immediately. Given the length of the lightning strike sound, I also add a fade out for one second with a three second delay so it doesn't last too long. In the flags of all the ambient genetics, make sure play everywhere is ticked. Next, to stop the player running around and ending up in a different place before the transition, you can also slow the player down. To do this, create a new entity and make it a player speed mod. Give it a unique name, I'm calling mine player speed. In the logic relay, add a new output on trigger, name of your speed mod, modify speed 0.1. You can use different speeds if you want, but I find this one works well for this purpose. At the same time you enable the teleport, you can add another output to the speed mod with modify speed 1, which will reset the speed back to normal. Here's what it looks like in game. So we're now all done with this tutorial, but I also want to show an example of this flash time travel being used. This is an unreleased map of mine from 2023. It was going to be the sequel to Spooky, but I decided not to finish it and to focus on other projects instead. But this is an adventure map that makes multiple uses of this flash time travel. It's a cool feature that is used to access areas that would be otherwise inaccessible in the present. It can also allow for lots of interesting storytelling techniques. For instance, it can be used in foreshadowing, such as you first see a wall in the future that's been destroyed, allowing you to walk through it. Meanwhile, in the present, when you go back, you see something, destroy it. But that's just one idea for time travel. Of course, there's a huge amount you can do when it comes to adventure or story-driven maps. Hope you found this video helpful. Any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, you can leave them in the comments. See ya.